Hey there smartphone fans, welcome back for another honest hands-on review and if you're looking for the most in-depth, honest and real review of the Huawei Mate 10, this is the place to be. But if you're just looking for prediction value and entertainment, I suggest you take a look at the sellouts like Unbox Therapy and Mr. Who's the Boss. Right now let's get on to it. Huawei Mate 10, I've bought this device uh, around uh, a month and a half ago for around $600 straight from China. Yes, I imported it, not from Kara, so I don't have any warranty. Ah, goodness. And so far I have no problems, the phone looks great, premium build quality, top of the line, I really don't like glass phones, but this is something exceptional, Gorilla glass on the front and back, very nice feel to it, very ergonomic design, can be used with one hand, although it's a 6 inch, 16 by 9 device, that's right, it's not 18 by 9 and it has the thinnest side and top and bottom bezels I've seen on 16 by 9 phone. The front fingerprint scanner is great, you can use it to fully navigate the phone or you can have the virtual keys if you want to use them that is but for me i just use the front fingerprint scanner for navigation emui as much as you hate it has been vastly improved with android 8 oreo and i have regular every month updates delivering the latest security patch and let's face it we need the best security because we're paying more and more with nfc from our phones and you also have bonus security features like the private app space which is like a separate desktop you can go to I have your private apps in there and you can access it at any time there's also the file safe which you can encrypt uh, audio files documents just basically any file you feel it's very valuable to you and you want it hidden and of course you also have the app lock by locking the app and those people can't use it another great feature is the home screen star you can have a traditional chinese without an app drawer or with an app drawer and you can now have the option to switch the display resolution which i think should be available on all phones and i keep mine at full hd if you're wondering you also have these new badges on android oreo uh, which you now have an icon that's showing a little badge on it it means it has notifications and if you hard press it it will show you actually the notification and there's also force touch enabled on other apps as well uh, but it's just on few and the mostly system apps google apps and you now have the picture in picture mode also but the picture in picture mode is again limited to a few apps like chrome Google Maps and the video player. In general, EMUI offers a lot of customization options, uh, free teams, free wallpapers, and you can change your icon style wallpapers a lot. One of the best features is swiping down from the home screen and just type any letters into automatically search to anything, messages, galleries, anything that contains those letters, so it's very easy to find something that you don't know where it is. What about handling? Is the big phone handled very well? Yes, thanks to the very curved sides and the glass pack is very, very one hand usage friendly and uh, very easy to operate. It's not, it may be glass phone, but it's not slippery thanks to the Gorilla Glass, I think. I've really had no problems uh, fitting it in pockets, uh, man bags and generally anywhere I wanted to. The phone does look big but it's very very easy to handle with one hand when it comes to connectivity and ports mate 10 has everything you want stereo speakers usb type c 3.5 millimeter headphone jack ir blaster nfc anything you want the mate 10 has it and has it in style and speaking about style that pack is just incredible don't you dare put a case on this lovely lovely phone Core quality has been perhaps the best I've ever experienced because of the new AI chip cancelling out external noises and focusing on your voice. GPS has been also incredible inside, outside, no problems. And this year Huawei have put the best audio jack for hi-fi audio. And when you plug in to the headphone jack, some very good pair of headphones, the sound quality is amazing and you can also fine tune everything on it. But when it comes to Bluetooth speakers, all Snapdragon devices sound better because they have the aptX codec and Bluetooth 5. And now let's talk about the breathtakingly amazing cameras on the Mate 10 and the AI chip. Um, what the AI chip mostly does is it recognizes objects and then applies certain settings so that you get the best shot when it comes to the type of photo you want to take, uh, whether it's a human photo, plant photo, food, landscape, it applies those settings and you do actually get a great result. 
puts uh, it also then systematically arranges them in your gallery and it knows which shots of food which shots of people and it recognizes certain people places landscapes so whenever you want to just uh, oh i want to show you pictures of food you don't have to just scroll to your gallery and um, you know search for them between all those photos it, the may 10 already has them sorted out for you thanks to this ai chip which is great for me at least and you now have easier access uh, to the pro modes in the camera settings now that you'll be actually needing this since the made sense ultra mode is so easy and just so good and you also have all these billions and billions of other functions you can do uh, with uh, the camera and if you don't know what something does there's an information and there's actually two three sentences to sh tell you what it actually does but now on to the photos portrait mode absolutely best time I've ever seen no iPhone next no nothing incredible but the main 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 greatness here is landscapes and macro shots and of course low light shots as well these are all handheld photos on ultra modes I don't use tripods like other reviewers I don't use manual settings or if, if I do I just specifically say okay this is taken on manual I think it's technically in possible to get a bad shot using the mate 10 just just look at those low light shots the f1.6 aperture and big pixel size on the Leica cameras deliver bar none for me the best low light photography i have ever done on a smartphone and this is as i said just on auto mode just just popping and shooting they all look super professional the front camera although it may not seem like much is truly amazing as well perhaps one of the best on the market so don't worry that uh, you know it's just eight megapixels the current camera is great view quality has been very much improved because of the optical image stabilization the new sensors just look at this video it is on a very windy heavy blizzard day and the stabilization is incredible bottom and uh, the audio noise cancelling is just very good also amazing now let's talk about the display of the Mate 10. The Mate 10 and the Mate 10 Pro have different displays. The Mate 10 Pro has OLED and this one has an IPS, but it uses an RGBW panel and it's HDR compliant with the new HDR standards and the, the display on the Mate 10 is great. It's not uh, overblown punchy colors like the OLED and AMOLED, it's very accurate color production. It emphasizes on white being lifelike paper white and I might add that this is the best work display I've ever used on a phone. I've been using it for like three, four hours straight and I never had any headaches, like eyes getting sore or anything. So this is uh, a display that's meant to be looked at and meant to be viewed for longer hours and everything you want is great, just amazing display. What's also amazing is Huawei's supercharge from 7 to 75% in just 38 minutes no phone does that incredible and you definitely need that because uh, we've come to the first stumbling block of the mate and this is the battery life <clears throat> now battery life is uh, good but it's not amazing it's not snapdragon 835 for amazing uh, you can get around maximum 89 hours of screen on time even on a he very heavy usage day but if you span that for more than a day you get if you do that like two days you probably get around three to four hours of screen on time which is not the best actually when it comes to benchmarks the kirin 970 performs uh, much faster than the kirin 960 mainly because of the new graphics core from mali but the cpu part is mostly the same and this is running the new m227 test that's right it is new and tutu with the new game engine and the, the new and tutu surprise surprise pits the Kirin 970 on par with the Snapdragon 835 and anything. But if there's something that Huawei phones are the best at, it's storage. This Mate 10 has the fastest storage available on the market. Faster than your Note 8 S7, faster than anything on the market. Just uh, transferring large files from your PC, moving files on the storage just takes mere seconds, like milliseconds. So. Um, this is something very important for me because I move a lot of files around for my reviews and the Mate 10 is amazing PC companion, PC Mate. And as you can see the performance uh, switching between apps, opening and closing apps is also very good. But 
probably a bit sold in the Snapdragon 835. Uh, same level of speed as the Kirin 960. I said CPU is the same, storage is faster, but opening, closing apps, multitasking is just a tiny, tiny bit slower than any Snapdragon 835 phone I've tested. So if you're mainly looking for the fastest phone around, and especially if you use a Snapdragon 835, device before the Mate 10, the Mate 10 might feel just a little tiny bit more sluggish than the Snapdragon 835. But as being said, the performance is still flagship worthy. I don't have any issues even with just 4 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, I can say that the multitasking is fine. The AI chip actually recognizes which apps I use the most and tries to save those apps in the memory. So even if I have opened a lot of apps, the Mate 10 uh, doesn't reward those that I use most of the time. And if you're concerned about gaming, the Kirin 970 can run any game on the Android Play Store and perhaps any game for years to come without any issues, especially if you link on Full HD resolution. But there is the problem with the thermals. When you play very heavy games or use the camera for video recording for a long time, the phone does get hot, which is something I really don't like seeing. And the Snapdragon 835 manages thermals much better and I think that's why it has better battery life. So expect the Mate 10 and the Kirin 970 to get just a little bit hotter than you used to, especially if you've used the Snapdragon 835 before that. So this has been it for my Mate 10 full in-depth honest review. I don't think you'll find a better one out there on the web. Thank you for watching it. If you like what you see, subscribe to my channel for more reviews like this. Check out my other videos and share them so that your friends can enjoy them as well. This has been Stephen Fox. Thank you for watching and peace out. Stick around.